Your new garden building needs an appropriate base for installation. For this Dutch barn, we're using solid concrete. However, if you're installing onto a softer surface, you could also use our timber porter base, available for nearly all of our garden buildings. Your base needs to be firm and level. For this building, you will need an area at least 244cm by 244cm. You will also need to ensure you have at least a 2 foot gap around the entire perimeter of the building. This makes installation easier and allows for a wood treatment to be applied later. All of the components and fixings are supplied with the building, so all you'll need are some basic tools. For this Dutch barn, you'll need a posi drive screwdriver, a cutting tool, a step ladder, a hammer, a tape measure and a drill with a 2mm and a 10mm drill bit. You will need at least two people to install this building, and we would recommend using safety gloves while handling the panels. Using the instructions, check all parts against the parts list and ensure that all pieces are present and correct before beginning construction. Each wall panel will have two transport blocks attached to the bottom frame, which will need to be removed with a hammer. Begin by laying the door panel and gable top down onto a level surface and place the gable top over the top edge of the door panel. The tongue and groove boards need to be fully engaged and flush at each end. Use a drill with a 2mm bit to pre-drill 4 holes in the lower frame and 4 in the top, ensuring they are evenly spaced. Pre-drilling is essential to not only protect your timber from splitting, but it also makes construction significantly easier. This should be done at all times. Join the door panel and gable top together through the pre-drilled holes using 60mm screws. We recommend testing the torque settings on your drill to a level you are happy with, ensuring the screws are countersunk and securing the timber, but not damaging it. With the screws in place, align a gable strip over the joint, making sure that it's central and the bottom of the strip lines up with the lower edge of the panel framing. Pre-drill six holes into the framing strip as shown. Refer to the instructions for specific screw placement and secure the strip in place using 40mm screws. Carefully flip the door panel over. Align the 1449mm door strip at the top of the frame and secure in place using four 30mm screws. Place the left and right door strips flush with the end of the top strip. This will leave a gap between the strip and the door frame as shown. Secure each strip with four evenly spaced 30mm screws. Place the slave door within the frame. Measure 170mm down from the top of the door. This point marks where the central screw of your T-hinge needs to be placed. Align the hinge accordingly. The middle hinge needs to be placed 720mm down from the top hinge, measuring from each middle hinge hole. The bottom hinge also needs to be affixed 720mm down from the middle hinge. Pre-drill through each screw hole before affixing the hinge with 7 30mm screws. Lay the master door within the door frame and affix the hinges in the same method with the same spacing as before. Lay the rear panel and gable top down onto a level surface and place the gable top over the top edge of the rear panel. The tongue and groove bores need to be fully engaged as before and the framing pieces flush at each end. Pre-drill 8 holes for your screws in the top and bottom framing. Adjoin the back panel and gable top together through the holes using 60mm screws. Align a gable strip over the joint, making sure that it is central and the bottom of the strip lines up with the lower edge of the panel framing. Pre-drill 6 holes into the framing strip as shown. Refer to the instructions again for specific screw placement and secure the strip in place using 40mm screws. The next step is to assemble the window panel. Lay the window side panel face up on a flat surface. Align the window strip over the top section of the frame. Using a tape measure, ensure that it is 11mm above the window opening. Pre-drill three holes, one at each end and in the middle, before affixing in place using 30mm screws. At this point you can choose whether you want an opening window or a fixed window for your shed. For an opening window, place the window within the frame and align the two hinges over the joint at the top. Space them equally at each end and pre-drill through the hinge holes. Attach the hinge to the window strip with three 30mm screws and to the window with three 60mm screws. Repeat this for the second hinge. If you would prefer a fixed window for your shed, place the window within the frame as before and pre-drill through each corner of the window fixed with 30mm screws in each hole. Place the floor panels down onto your prepared base. The floor comes in two sections for easy handling and need to be laid next to each other so that the edge framing pieces butt up against each other. 
The floor panels need to be affixed as shown, pre-drilling four holes at an angle into each floor, making eight holes in total. The screws need to be angled to ensure that the panels are adjoined securely. Fix the two panels together using 50mm screws. Place the rear gable onto the back of the floor so that the bottom board hangs over the edge and the framing is flush against the floor. Put the plain panel up against the rear panel as shown, ensuring the framing in the corner is pressed firmly together. Pre-drill a hole into the side panel framing at the top, middle and bottom of the frame before securing the two panels with 50mm screws. Attach the window side panel in the same method, making sure to push the framing tightly together from both sides to ensure a tight joint. The front gable attaches in the same method as before, pre-drilling each hole at the top, middle and bottom before affixing to the side panels with 50mm screws. To begin the roof construction, take one of the smaller roof panels. Each panel has slightly larger overhang of roof boards to one side. Ensure that the larger overhang is orientated towards the apex. Pre-drill two holes at each end of the roof panel before screwing down into the rafter below with 30mm screws. Repeat this for the second small panel. The large roof panel slot into the same cutouts. Make sure the horizontally aligned framing is on the outside of the building. Affix these in the same method as the smaller panels, with an additional three screws along the bottom edge of the panels. With the roof on, you can now affix the framing of the wall panels down to the floor. Pre-drill 18 holes around the entire perimeter of the frame, with four in each side panel and five in the front and rear gables, affixed down with 50mm screws. To felt the roof, roll out your supplied felt to a length of 2522mm. Use a cutting tool to slice through the felt and create four strips. Lay your first strip along the bottom edge of the roof, allowing enough overhang at the side to cover the frame, but not curve underneath it. There should also be an equal amount of overhang at the front and back of the building. Tack the felt in the two top corners to hold it steady, ensuring there are no wrinkles in it, and repeat this for the other side of the roof. The third and fourth strips need to overlap the first and second by 150mm. They need to be attached in the same method, ensuring an equal overhang at the front and back. Once all four strips are aligned, go along each joint and along the edges of the roof with felt tacks, securing the felt at 100mm intervals for the whole building. The cover trims need to be placed over the framing at each panel corner. These need to be pre-drilled at the top, middle and bottom, before being affixed with 30mm screws. For the fascia boards, arrange them so that the angled pieces fit the shape of the roof. Make sure to pre-drill each board at each end and in the middle to prevent splitting, then screw them into the framing below with 40mm screws. Repeat this for the back of the roof too. The barge boards need to be arranged as shown at the front of the building, so that the boards fit neatly into the roof angles. Pre-drill each board, then screw them into the cladding at each end and in the middle using 20mm screws. To install the tower bolts, align the bolt over the framing at the top and bottom of the slave door. Pre-drill through the bolt holes and attach each bolt using black 30mm screws. Mark where the bolt meets the top and bottom framing, then using the 10mm drill bit, create holes to allow the bolt to lock in position. The rim lock needs to be attached to the master door. Align the main body of the lock over the end of the central door framing so that the keyhole and the pre-drilled door holes line up. Fix in place using the long black screws provided. Slide the handlebar through the handle hole in the orientation shown. Fix the inside handle over the bar and secure using the small grub screw in the side of the handle. Fit the door handle cover over the bar and to fix in the door using two 30mm screws. The door handle can be affixed in the same method as before. Place the door catch over the edge of the slave door and attach with two black screws. If you have fitted an opening window, the window casement stay needs to be aligned as shown onto the window and screwed into position using 20mm screws. Place the fixings on the sill, making sure that they line up with the holes of the stay before screwing them in place. Attach the two turn buttons to the top and bottom of the slave door as shown, making sure to pre-drill and attach using 30mm black screws. Make sure they are not affixed too tightly and can catch the master door. Score around the edge of your window both inside and out. This will allow you to remove the protective plastic coating.
your shed is now complete. For more information on this building or any of our other garden storage options, please visit merciagardenproducts.co.uk.